Good evening guys, so tonight's video I'm going to be chasing after the Crocs Eye Galaxy. Something unique about this particular target that I'm going to be imaging tonight, I can't just take like one set of exposures and expect to get the most out of it. I think with this particular target, going to need to do three different sets of exposures. One for the core, because it has a really bright core. One for the area surrounding the core and the dust lanes uh, in that area surrounding the core. And then around the main area of the galaxy is kind of like this wispy, light, very dim ring. It really makes the galaxy pop. So I'm gonna do another set of exposures to capture that. Get that all stacked up in DSS, then stretched in Astral Pixel Processor and do some uh, blending of those different sets of images in Photoshop and that's the game plan for this evening so in a little while here when the Sun goes down we'll get everything set up and we'll get this underway Okay guys, so for tonight's session, that as I mentioned before, we're going after M94. Uh, that is also known as the Crocs Eye Galaxy. Uh, this one is a unique target in that it has a very wide dynamic range on it. So last night, I actually took the moderately bright part of the target, uh, doing 90 second subframes at ISO 3200, and I took 60 of those last night. Tonight, I'm gonna be shooting for 15 second 15 or 20 second subframes and do another 60 of those and that will take care of the core hopefully it should tame the core a bit and be easier to incorporate that into the image later in post-processing as long as the sky stays clear tomorrow evening I'll be doing even longer images uh, that's my son pounding on the window <laughs> I'll be doing even longer images I'll probably be doing 180 second subframes tomorrow to try and capture that outer ring that's really dimly lit. That way you can have all three parts incorporated into the image. So with that, I'm gonna get everything polar aligned, get everything focused up, ready to go, and uh, we'll do a follow up here shortly. All right, so here we are with the stacked frames of the 180 second subframes, okay? Let's go ahead and do our initial stretch. Mark sign 100. Okay, looks good there. Flatten that out. Do a levels adjustment. There we go. Flatten again. And actually, let's go ahead and change the image size. It'll make this process go a little bit faster. 300. That's 20 by. I just put in 20. It automatically formats it to this. And then at 300 DPI. All right, let's duplicate that layer again and do another stretch. Well, before we do that, actually, let's um, let's go ahead and add some color back into this. Every time you stretch, even though I use these color-preserving stretches, these arc sign stretches here, um, they're, they're, you still have a little, you still lose color when you stretch your data. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so what we're going to do is select color range because we don't want to add noise to the background we just want to selectively add color to the rest of the image so let's adjust this slider watch this area here we want to make sure we're getting all the stars there okay all right, that looks pretty good but we're going to want to expand this selection so select modify expand four pixels is good in this i believe and feather 2. Hold down the shift key. I'm on the lasso by the way. Lasso. Hold down shift and left click and expand that selection. So we increase color in these areas. Mask right here. Layer mask. Press alternate. Left click to take a look at the mask. Yeah, that's That's fine. That's feathered out. 50 pixels. That's fine. And those look pretty good there. 
you could run a, a Gaussian blur on this to soften it a little more, uh, soften the selections that would be affected. Um, but I think for this demonstration and really overall, it's, this should be okay. All right, so now we're going to do a Control U, saturation boost, go 35, change that layer type to color, go down here into Control M curves. 245 in the output and this should be 128 128 in both of those selections there we go so here's before after you see that color boost there and it did not change the background color now let's flatten that out and let's do another stretch here curves under presets and arc sign 10 okay now we're now we're getting there and you can start to see that halo that I was trying to capture I didn't illuminate that quite as much as I would have liked. I probably sh actually should have gone further, but really, you know, I'm in Bortle 5 Sky, so you get to a point where you, you go farther, but you just start absorbing more light pollution, and, it, you know, it's a tug of war, really. Um, this really would have been better a better target I think at a darker site where you could really pull out that data, but we're gonna we're gonna work with this and see what we can do here, so let's uh pull up levels actually before we do that let's pull out this light pollution let's go ahead and do that and then we'll do a levels adjustment let's go ahead and flatten this image duplicate that layer and now let's do the color sample there we go all backspace there we go select the background image here go to image apply image and you want this to go to subtract hit OK select that garbage layer there delete it and there we have successfully subtracted out the bulk of that light pollution okay so this is what we're left with and you can see there's some massive gradients here and vignetting but we're going to take care of that with gradient exterminator let's go into levels and there's a small adjustment that can be made there we go flatten that control j again and let's select with the lasso our target area that we don't want to have messed with. So I'm going to include that light halo ring around that target selection there. Select inverse, okay, and then go to filter. And if you don't already have this, you need to download it. Grading Exterminator. It is a must in my book, in, in my opinion, for removing gradients in your astrophotography images. It does such a good job. Uh, Russell Croman is the creator of this. Uh, program and it does a phenomenal job of removing gradients and I'll, I'll show you here so gradient exterminator uh, these are pretty bad gradients so I'm gonna go aggressiveness high detail medium and here we go look at that gone completely look at that flatten out that image gradients are non-existent <laughs> love it okay so that parts done we can flatten that out now as far as stretching this data further I'm not sure I want to take it any further than this. Um, let's go into Camera Raw Filter and take away, or at least minimize some of the noise that's in this data here, the luminance and color noise. Let's go to this tab, Noise Reduction. Let's crank up that luminance slider to about a 30, color slider to about a 40. There, that looks good. And that pulled some of that out. We'll boost the vibrance here just a tad. Let's go uh, maybe 20 and color saturation. I don't like doing this too heavy because sometimes you can overdo it, but we'll, we'll boost it a little bit. Let's go about 20, 23 there. Here we go. All right, let's see what we got here, what we're working with. All right, that's looking good. Okay, that adjustment's been made. Now, the noise reduction does soften the image slightly, but you can recover that. and. The detail we want to preserve is right in here. So let's do our selection here again. Okay, all those nice little dust lanes. And go to Sharpen, Smart Sharpen. And I've got my settings on 121, 5456. You can adjust this to taste. I, I try to avoid do overkill on this because you can really just posterize the heck out of the image and it just it just makes it look gaudy and fake in my opinion. So I'm going to go with a mild sharpening here and run with that. I think that'll do well. 
and give us some some decent detail. I mean, overall the image could be a little sharper, but part of that's probably due to just not having absolute perfect collimation on the RC. Uh, that's a that is a constant battle, and that is a video of in itself uh, coming in the future as I become better and better at collimating that telescope. Love that telescope. It gives it's given me some great images, but collimating that telescope is definitely in, or can be an ordeal sometimes. But uh, hopefully a video on that coming soon. All right, guys, let's see here. So we've got some color left in the stars. Not a ton. You can see the yellow or orangish yellow here on that one. Not really a whole lot of blues there. Those have been kind of clipped uh, a bit there, but still not not bad. I'm I'm fairly pleased with that. I just want to bring out this halo more. So the way I'm going to do this, let's go ahead and flatten this out since we've done that adjustment. The way I'm going to approach bringing out that halo more is it's really just making a selection. We're going to feather it about, let's see what 75 pixels does, okay? And I'm going to just select, you can see where the darker area is. I don't want to select that because that's not where the halo is. And just really carefully, try and smoothly select that. Okay, that's not bad. All right, Control M for curves, and we're just going to do just the slightest curve adjustment to stretch that area where the halo is a little bit more. All right, that made that helped a little bit, so we can actually see some of that. All right, let's go make the selection to the other half. I'm sure there's a better way to do this, guys, but. I don't like that selection. Let's try that again. But really, with this particular target, it honestly just needs longer exposure time or faster focal ratio if you got it at a darker site, in my opinion. I think it would you would fare far better. This was a really challenging target to get good data on. Control M again, and let's just just a slight bump there, about the same as the other one. There we go. All right, so that's brought that halo out a, a good bit. I mean, it's still not super prominent, but it's you can at least see it now, so that's not bad. All right, so that's all I'm going to do with the 180. And really, I'll be honest with you, you probably could stop here, and, and you know, you have a pretty decent image with this. That didn't take too long. But let's go ahead and take a look at um, the 90 and see if that gives us a little more detail and color in this area right here. Okay. So I did the same adjustments I did on the stack of 180 second subframes here on the 90. As you see, that halo is even less apparent. You may not even be able to see it on the, on the screen here, but I can just barely see it. But what I really wanted here was this core area, which is definitely better exposed in comparison to this one. It's, it's, you can see here it's blown out completely. This detail is not bad, but this should stack nicely on that other image. So that's what we're going to do next here. Pull these images aside, each other. Now we don't we don't want to select the whole image. We just want to move over the area that we want to correct. So okay, so what we're gonna do to blend these two together is we're gonna make a selection here, which I did, okay? Because we want to just blend this area over this area, okay? So the first step in that process, make the selection you want to blend in, which I did using the lasso and holding down the shift key while making that selection okay then we're gonna go over here to the move selection tool and we're just gonna drag this right on top of that okay to line this up better you want to uh, drop the opacity so you can see where it is there you can see that it's not perfectly aligned so let's work on that um, right about there I know that doesn't quite line up with the stars, but we really want we want to make sure we're lining up. We can clean that up with a little touch up there, but that's pretty darn close there. Let's see. Yeah, that's pretty darn close. That's pretty darn centered. All right, so now that's the first step. We can minimize this. Oop. Get that out of the way. Now the next step is to paste, make a layer mask on this and paste the background layer into this okay this is where the magic comes in and being able to blend these two images together seamlessly so we're gonna click on this layer here press control a 
Control C to copy it. Alt left click, Control V, paste it there. And there, now we have blended those two together. You can make a curves adjustment here as well on this layer to either brighten the selection, reveal more of the selection that's behind it, or the selection that's on top. But I kind of like this blend here. Or you can drag the slider down here, kind of darken that. You just want to use just enough of it to get it optimal. Okay. And again, that's probably, that's going to be subjective, but I think for, for me and my taste, I think about right there is, is going to be good. So let's, let's go with that. And, and really that's about it. There's, there's not a whole lot more I would do to this. You could go back here with another color mask and boost the star color. I mean, we could do that just to get, get those stars to pop a little more. Let's do that. So let's flatten this out. Let's do color range, and we really just want the stars in this one, so right, right about there. And we want to deselect this, so um, you hold down you hold down Shift to add to your selection, and left click, and you hold down Alternate to unselect a selection. There you go. All right, but let's expand the selection of the stars. Just like before, expand by four pixels, I think works pretty good with this this image. Feather two. All right, mask it. And control U. And let's boost that saturation. I mean, you can go nuts with it, <laughs> which it looks crazy. But I think you can go fairly heavy here and it not there we go, just so we can see the color in those stars. I'm going to say 40, 45 is good there. There we go. All right, so that helps with the star color. Change that. Let's finish this, though. So the next step here is to change the layer to a color mode. And just as before, we click on the background, Control-M, do a minor curves adjustment. There we go. That really, there's on-off. That did really boost the color in the images there a bit. So... Guys, that is really about all I would do to that. We sharpened the cores about as much as I want to. We reduced, minimized the noise. We brought up that halo a little bit more. And there you have it. That is the Crocsi Galaxy M94. That concludes the video for this evening. If you enjoyed it, you felt like you got some good information out of this, it helped you out, please give me a thumbs up, like, and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos that will be coming to you every Monday weekly. And until next time, clear skies.